What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another Keto Conversation. So let's get started. Alright, so we are back for another uh, Keto Conversation for the week, uh, whatever week this is. We are well into the new year and uh, what's the third week of the new year or yep. something? Feels like January is flying by. Feels like it's been a lot longer, especially when I go to work. Feels like <laughs> I've been there for uh, six months already. But we're back and we want to talk about today, we want to go over five things that we wish we knew about keto before we started. So five things that we wish we knew about keto before we started. So this is just kind of, you know, a lot of times we, I just jumped into keto because Sarah jumped into keto. Although I was already trying to lose weight. So, yes. but I was eating at her, at her house a lot. It didn't make sense for me to, for her to be making two different types of food. So I did some research on keto myself and I said, hey, it makes sense to me. And I jumped in it with her, but I didn't, there were things that I didn't even realize about it before I jumped into it. So uh, we want to talk about those things, five things that we think that we wish we would have known. And uh, maybe it'll help somebody who's just starting their keto journey as well. Yes. And if you can identify with this and think of some other things you wish you would have known, you can leave those in the comments as well. So what's number one? That the first month or two can seem expensive. Mm, yeah, we've heard so, this before. Right. Um, I think that that comes from when you start buying some ketogenically friendly foods, things yeah. like almond flour, MCT oil or coconut oil, some mm. of your natural sweeteners can seem on the expensive side. And they are, don't get me wrong. But um, eventually you are going to eat less, you're going to be more satisfied, and those things that you purchased are going to last you for a while. So you're not going to to go through those things at an advanced rate, maybe perhaps like we do, because we create recipes. Sure, <laughs> so sure. we go through them, you yeah, know, we go quite through, often. We go through so much sweetener and almond flour, it's, it's crazy, but it's because right. we, we produce But recipes. realistically, you're going to have a one-time buying those, and then it's going to last you for a while. So it, it will offset itself. And yeah. you know, sometimes you know you're buying cuts of meat and maybe some other things that you didn't buy quite as often on this lifestyle. So sometimes it can seem expensive. But yeah. you know, when you really sit down and calculate it, you know, you're shopping the perimeter of the store and you know, sometimes food quality is better there and so that can have a slightly elevated price. But you are going to be eating less eventually because you are going to be more satisfied on this lifestyle. Sure. So it will offset. And and also keep in mind, I mean, when you you know, so again we make recipes to give people options. Um so you can be successful in keto long term. But when we first started keto, we didn't necessarily start automatically making all these recipes. No. We had some very simple foods that we ate. We talk about this all the time. We had some simple go-to foods that we ate all the time. And yeah, we bought some almond flour here and there. We mm -hmm. bought some you know, natural sweetener here and there. But of course, as because of what we do, uh, with the YouTube thing, we, we buy probably more than you would, but right. um, initially when we started, it was just, from my perspective, it was just changing what I was buying um, versus, I, I didn't really notice the expense that much. Right. Um, I just noticed that I was buying different food, and it, yeah, there probably was more, it probably was more expensive, but I wasn't also buying all that other junk that you I was buying. You're not buying before. a lot of filler foods. Yeah, I wasn't like buying like snacks and things yeah. like chips and you know goodies and a whole bunch of other yeah. things. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because we still have kids that mm -hmm. we buy that stuff for, and it, and all that those snacks and all that kind of stuff filler food adds up, mm -hmm. and um, you know so, but yeah, so it can seem expensive up front. We've got some recipes and we've got a video on how to do keto um, on a budget. Mm -hmm. We can link to that as well, but it's doable. And again, long term, it's it's probably going to average all out. Well, because some of your your more ketogenically friendly cuts of meat are the fattier cuts of meat, and generally those are a lower cost item. Sure. So you know, chicken thighs versus chicken breasts, that kind of thing. You know, bone-in pork chops with the fat tend to be. 
uh, more cost effective than you know like the sirloin pieces so sometimes it can work in your advantage yeah and it, it just occurred to me though that sometimes I think where this comes from the about the expenses the teaching the keto teaching about grass-fed this right. uh, you know farm raised eggs and all that and we have never Yes, we've had grass-fed beef and grass-fed other things and farm-raised eggs. We're not big proponents but of we that, haven't, at least we, not at the start. We have not had, we have not had, we've never felt like we had to do that right. to be able to be successful on keto. So, And I if mean, food quality is something you want to eventually work on, that's fine. Sure. But, yeah, and we talked about that before as well. If you want to get to the point where you're having grass-fed beef all the time, that's more power to you. We just don't believe that you... We don't believe that that is a must to be successful in keto. Definitely not, especially not up front. Yeah, we don't believe that. So a lot of times people have that in their mind as well because uh, they either read it or been taught it. And it's, we can tell you that you don't have to do that to be successful in keto. Correct. Uh, number two, uh, you wrote this list, so I'm going to let you read all the topics. <laughs> that you'll be hungry in a different way. And so what is meant by that is that you're not going to be doing so much mindless eating, you know, snacking. You're not, you're not going to likely have those feelings where you're hangry because your blood sugar is going to be more controlled on this lifestyle. You're going to learn to feel like what it's like to be full but not uncomfortable. You know, sometimes when you're eating the standard American diet, you'll get so ravenously hungry that you'll eat and eat and eat and you're eating a lot of carbohydrate filler foods, potatoes and rices and starches. And those can really fill your stomach up quickly and make you feel very uncomfortable and bloated. Hmm. And this lifestyle is less likely to have that happen to you. You will get fuller faster and stay fuller longer. And also you will start to crave foods that are good for you, like protein. Your body will start to crave those whole foods. So it's going to feel different. You're going to feel different in, in the fullness that you feel on this lifestyle than you did before. Yeah, and, and I will say that some of you, and I, I will count myself, you have a problem with knowing when you're full and when you don't. Whether you're keto or not keto, you still have that issue, and you, and it's a habit to eat. Right. You know, it's a habit to have snacks. It's interesting, because even that, we were talking about that carb manager app, mm -hmm. and, you know, so it has the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but it also has room for two or three snacks. And I found that interesting because that's like, so this is an app for <laughs> tracking your carbs, right. but it's got built in how we really kind of been taught in our society to eat. Especially um, in the last 30 years yeah, or so. You know, the, six the more, meals a day. Right. And so, or six, six, yeah. And so I thought that was interesting. So uh, if I really think about, and this is just a personal confession for me, I still struggle with eating when I'm not hungry. I still have to deal with that. I work with it all the time. Um, just some of it's just got to do with work and stress, but some of it is it, something that in 2020 I'm going to get control of. And but because yeah. I do know that a lot of times I'm eating and I'm not hungry. Do you think that part of that is having is having been insulin resistant for so long? Do you think because mm -hmm. you had diabetes, maybe it's a little bit more of a journey for you to figure out what what the different levels of your fullness feel like? I, I don't know. I think sometimes for me it's just a matter of... It's just habit. It's just habit. I eat at a certain time because it's time to eat. I may not even be hungry. Uh, I may eat breakfast some days uh, just because I feel like eating breakfast. I'm not hungry. I may eat a snack after lunch, something maybe sweet because mm -hmm. That's, that's what you've always done. That's what you do. Not after because you lunch. really feel like you need it. Right. And so that's something that a lot of you guys probably struggle with. Uh, I know I, it's something in 2020 that I'm determined to get under control. And but um, being on keto, it is different. Um, you don't. You're not as hungry right. as before, and you just need to learn how to listen to those signals. Right. Because I remember being on certain calorie restricted plans back in the day. You know, in other ways that I tried to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were allotted your portion size or your points or whatever program you were following. Sure. And then you would still, you could eat the carpet. You were so hungry after that. You absolutely did not feel like you were, yeah, full, like you were full on your allotment. And you should not feel that way with this lifestyle. So sometimes getting used to that is going to take some time. And it is going to be different yeah. than other lifestyles you've tried. Sure. All right. What's number three? It's easier if you can cook and eat at home. Yeah, that's true. 
That's true. I mean, we now we go out pretty regularly. Yeah. Um, well, we don't go out all the time. No. But we do go out, and it's interesting that when we go out, we, we kind of have the same places that we go to all the time because we figured out what we can eat yeah, there. Yeah, I think a lot of it goes back to food quality yeah. and food choices. And food choices. Um, you know, obviously you know what's going into your food when you make it home yes. for the most part. But ultimately, it is easier to do keto if you eat at home. Yes. It is. It's, it's, just, it's just a fact. It's easier. Less expensive, you, generally. Yep. Yeah, yeah. uh, leftovers are a big deal for me. Because usually when you go to a restaurant, you don't you don't generally come home with leftovers. Sometimes you do. But I know that for us, a lot of times when I make a meal, I am then able to send it to CJ with CJ for work the following right. day. So a lot of times you will end up with one, more than one meal option, you know, the next day. So a lot of times you can... You can stretch more right your budget and that can go back to it being less expensive right. actually because right. you're getting more meals out of it but it is easier to do keto um if you cook at home i mean we've been on vacation and mm -hmm. done keto uh we've been all over right and, been and, able to and stick a lot of times we have stayed on vacation in places that does have a kitchen because we like being yeah. able to cook some of our meals yeah. in a home environment yeah just because we can control what we're eating and it does save money yeah, you can't save and, money. but but if we really think about it, it, it is easier to do keto if you cook at home. And that doesn't mean it has to be yourself. boring, because That's true. you can get. I mean, we have a playlist of our recipes. Uh, CJ is rapidly working on a playlist for our recipes, but we have recipes on our blog, so you have plenty of inspiration if you're looking for something. Oh yeah, you. Pretty you have much, I've made choices. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's very few things I have yet to attempt. There are a few things, but. If you are looking for inspiration, if you are looking for ideas, you will find it there. Yeah. And, you know, so that is always something you, you don't have to be, you know, restrained into just a couple of foods. But on the other hand, sometimes eating simply, it's okay to do yeah, it simple is. keto. It is. And we do simple keto a lot. Yes, we do. I know a couple of, probably a couple of months ago, I was so sick and tired of ground beef burgers. I mean, <laughs> please having, don't make me another we were having, we were having, don't make me another we were patty. We have burger patties <laughs> like every week. And my, I was like, okay, if I see no. another burger, I'm going to turn into a cow. Because it was just, I was sick of them. Yeah. So but we had it to switch good it up. to mix it up. We had yeah. to switch it up and then I think we went off into zoodles and spaghetti. Yes. And then... Taco and now salads. you're you're okay again um, to right. have right ground a beef is bed. okay yeah. so yeah. <laughs> I can we can have a burger again right so keep it simple but it is easier to do keto if you're at home and then when you do go out if you do venture out you'll you, find the places you'll find the places don't be afraid to substitute don't be afraid to ask for no. what you need no. to to make stuff and work for you more and more places are getting low carb friendly oh, they have yeah. low carb buttons on their register keto's it's, a real thing they don't look at you crazy if you ask for oh, something yeah. in fact people lettuce, are like you or, must be doing keto yeah or if you yep. say no fries or whatever the yep. case may be nobody bats an eye anymore nope. so and there's so many people that are have food allergens of some kind they don't eat gluten or they don't eat this or they don't eat that so it's you're not going to be like yeah. the three-headed no monster it's by, it's it's yeah. changed it's even changed a lot since we started yes keto. even in the last three years yeah it's, really it's changed. changed a lot so. yep so all right um number four more benefits to keto than weight loss mm, yeah that's true so i came into keto for weight loss that was my one and only goal because that was what i was concerned with at the time i did not have any poor health markers i did not have diabetes I didn't have any of those things that motivated me to begin the ketogenic lifestyle. So mm -hmm. I went directly in for weight loss. It wasn't until that I was on this lifestyle for a while, and I mean this short period of time, three to six months, that I realized how many other benefits I was getting following this lifestyle than just the weight loss. So right. I couldn't believe how many of my aches and pains went away. It wasn't until they went away that you realized you had those aches and pains in the first place and how much they actually bothered you. Sure, sure. So, and you know when I started keto, I just like I said, I jumped in with you. But I'm trying to think. I think actually the diagnosis probably came around the same time mm -hmm. about the diabetes uh, being diagnosed as a type two diabetes or labeled as a type two diabetes and taking the medication. I think it all kind of happened around the same time. Um, so, uh, but yeah, like you said, and then I, one of the things I noticed is uh, just. Uh, mood my mood changed because i both and you and i had suffered from 
depression oh, yeah. of some kind, whether it be seasonal yeah. or whatever. Yeah. In the years before we began this yeah. lifestyle, yeah. we both like I was take, I was take, we both took medication. I took at one medication, point. Yeah. and I noticed that that changed. I mean, we still I still struggle with seasonal depression just because right. of where we live. I mean, we right, live we live in, in the Pacific Northwest, so yeah, you know. and it's dark, yeah. raining, raining, especially this time of year, yeah. and yeah. so that's that is just an ongoing thing, right? But but as far as actual clinical depression, you yeah. have noticed that a big difference yeah. in that, and I also have. like you know I I have a very physical job. And so I suffered from, from things like plantar fasciitis where I would get out of bed and I couldn't even walk on the ball of my foot when I would get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that went away very quickly when I started following this. So, you know, bringing down your inflammation, you will notice a lot of the things that bothered you that are suddenly gone. Yeah. And you, you didn't even realize that that yeah. would and then, So there's a lot of benefits. And then I think one of the things we also did, we probably don't do it as much, well, you may, but we actually listened to, we kind of educated ourselves as we started doing keto as well. So not only did we feel the difference, but we also started kind of getting some continuing education as right. well. I mean, we listen to podcasts. You still probably listen yes, to them more than I do. I think yes, I've, I do. I've kind of more focused toward... Well, you don't have a commute anymore, and I do. Yeah, so, so you've got the Because we ch kind of changed roles there in the last right. couple of years. And so. uh, in fact, yesterday, I actually... I purposely drove to pick up my daughter. I could have had cut it in half. I did it so that I could have time for to listen and, and right. to listen for things that I want, kind of get some education. But anyway, yes, we there's some definite benefits to keto besides just weight loss. And um, that was something we probably did not know when we first no. started. No. And so then number five is... Not everyone will support your keto choice. Hmm. So, and we're talking your family members, we're also talking society in general, because as popular as the ketogenic lifestyle has become, just mm -hmm. because celebrities do it, doesn't, you know, mean that everyone's going to accept your choice. Yeah. There's still going to be Newsweek and CNN and everybody else, yeah. and they do have more positive articles now than yeah. they did in the People, past. People, you know, it's, it is kind of interesting, because it's been about three years mm -hmm. since we started, and we've seen it, I've seen it change even with just kind of the feeling about keto. Right. Um, it's not considered as much of a fad as it was yes. at one time, but it is still considered a diet that is probably not sustainable, yes. I think is what you, you hear more I often I think you'll hear that more often than now. a fad, yeah. Yes, you'll hear more now that it's not sustainable, that you can't right. continue to do it long term. And um, But there's too many of y'all walking around that's had success. <laughs> For people to 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 poo poo it too much because right. it's you know a lot of y'all have lost hundreds of pounds and right. and you got off medication so you, even your doctors can't even refute it because it's exactly. like uh, well, what have you been doing I've been doing this keto thing that's okay oh okay well yeah. <laughs> you know what they can't say anything right and so but it it can be difficult when you know maybe you don't care about CNN maybe you don't care about yeah. Newsweek maybe you don't care about you know it could be just your a family. basketball player it could be yeah. your family though. if it's really personal and if it's yeah. the people that are close to you or even living in your same house and they're not supporting you yeah. it can be very difficult and I think that that happens more often and people uh, look for support because they're not getting it at home and you know sometimes it is okay to keep certain things to yourself you know if you feel like it would be better if you didn't tell you know Aunt Rosie that you are doing this lifestyle then don't you know it's okay to keep certain things of it to yourself while you're figuring it out and until maybe you feel like you've had a level of, of success that you can share it with more people. So it, you don't have yeah. to, you know, shout it from the rooftops. You'll want to because you'll feel good. Yeah. But sometimes it's okay to keep it to yourself if you feel like protecting yourself is the way to go so that you can stick with this long term until you feel a little bit more comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody might not be as supportive. I mean, like, like I said, keto is gotten more i guess status and more of a real thing but you it's it may be a home closest to home the people that you right. care about the most who may not be supportive to you and i always have said that you know what kind of like what sarah said you don't have to talk about it just do it right and, do, and people might start asking do, you when they see changes in right you. do what you need to do start making the changes and then people again it's hard for people to talk crap. I saw him right. said something else. It's hard for him to talk <laughs> crap 
when you, they look at they you see. and you're like, wow, you almost look like a different person. I can't right. remember who wrote us this, but somebody wrote a story about <laughs> yeah. they went to some kind of family. They went to a family, or it wasn't even a family function. It was like co-workers or friends, friends that they hadn't, they hadn't seen, seen in a long yeah. time. So her husband walks through the door. They both do. And there was this big awkward pause. And they're like, what's the matter? We thought that he had remarried because they didn't right. recognize they didn't her. Recognize they thought that he, that he had brought another woman to their right. function instead of the woman. So, you've been so with when you her. do that, when <laughs> yeah. you do the things you need to do, then you, you can stick say, with hey, keto, this is how I did that's it. That's right. I that's made myself right. into a new woman. Right. <laughs> but you know what? Even when you do that, you still can't. You can't please everyone. You can't please everybody. and You, you might can't, have family members that never. And you can't reason it. with stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. You might have family members that just yeah, never you, and, accept and it. And just accept that. Just It's just how it is. It's just how it is in life. And part of it, it could be because they don't want to change. And so they That's don't true. want to see that you've changed and know that there's something out there they could be doing because they just... That's they true. Because a lot of times people feel threatened when you right. have success. And right. they see that you've actually stuck with something and then done it. And they may have even heard of, heard of it. They may have tried it. Mm -hmm. And then they feel threatened. So sometimes there's a lot of stuff that's going on in, in, in people that we don't know and that right. you don't understand. But and some, it doesn't even have anything to do has, with you. It has nothing yeah. to do with you. It just got to do with that you have success and somehow they feel threatened by right. you know, your success. And, right. and it's this keto thing. And wow, you actually did it. <laughs> and wow, it actually worked. And I knew about that too, but I didn't do it. But anyway, so those are five things that we wish that we would have known when we started keto. Yes. And but we know them now, and so we're passing them on to you. Yes. So that you can know them. Yes. And if you have been doing keto for a while and can think of some other things um, that maybe we missed, left off our list, that's fine. You can leave them in the comments. But these are five things that we thought of, and we hope that it can help somebody on your keto journey. Take one day at a time, one week at a time. That's how you do it. That's how you become successful at keto and how you can become successful at anything. It's just yes. one day at a time doing the things that you need to do. If you're new here, these are our keto conversation segments. We do these every Wednesday. We do new recipes every Sunday. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you as part of our keto family. We don't claim to be experts, but we do claim that we're people who care about other people and we want to see people have success on their keto lifestyle, the keto diet, and this keto journey in general. So come join us. We're here all the time and we hope that you would consider subscribing and have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace.